Hello and welcome to this video. In my wildest musings, I never thought I'd get excited about a piece of tubular metal, something like 16, 17 inches long and about one and a half to two inches in diameter. To that end, um, I was looking for a stand or a stable platform to mount some of my Manfrotto kit and then mount cameras on top of that. I looked around the internet and found this rather nondescript, very cheap monitor stand and it became a really good solution to that ability to mount stuff onto it and create what I would uh, describe as a flexible and stable platform for both the Monfrato kit and the camera. I'm presenting that solution to you and I hope it's helpful and allows you to use cameras in a much more creative way. So sit back and enjoy the video. Okay, here we have the monitor um, stand and arm. It's as it is, it, this is the 16 pound uh, arm, which is very, very useful. I've actually bolted it to the desk. I've drilled a hole into the desk and it's, it's clamped underneath. And as you can see, it's pretty rigid. It's, it's as rigid as, as it could be. The arm itself is actually quite useful. The arm would normally mount the monitor and you would have that sort of two degrees of freedom with the monitor. However, in this particular case, I've used this as a means of actually uh, mounting a camera. So this is the visa plate that you would lock, lock your visa plate into to go onto your monitor. Um, I've drilled uh, a hole here, which is um, just over a quarter of an inch. So I can actually mount on there anything I want to in terms of uh, so for example, I could have, I wanted to mount this little uh, articulating arm here and I could place a quick release on there and that would allow me to have that on there. It's not substantive in any sense, but at least it's a, it's a first pass of being able to, you know, to have a device on here. I've also mounted a GoPro uh, mount here, which if you wanted to put a GoPro on there. So that would give you uh, a pleasant sort of uh, easy use, uh, free of use in a sense because basically the primary use of this is going to be what I add to it later in terms of the, uh, the Manfrotto uh, kit. So that would stand uh, in good stead for most small applications you'd want to use for a, a camera. Obviously limited to the amount of travel uh, to the post here. The post is about 17 inches high. So that's the limit on, on the height you would get. And that's basically how I'd use that. The next sort of stage up on this would be to use the um, the, uh, Ma Monf the, the Manfrotto, is it Monfrotto or Manfrotto? I'm going to call it Manfrotto from now on, or Monfrotto, it doesn't really matter. This is their super clamp, and the super clamp is actually an amazing piece of kit. This actually super clamp has a couple of configurations, uh, one of which is if you want it as a desk clamp, there's a plastic wedge here, you can see the outline of it there. That plastic wedge will allow you to mount it onto a desk here and you would tighten that onto the desk and then you would mount into here. The mounting's quite interesting. Um, you can see here you've got um, a couple, well you've got three quarter inch threads where you can actually mount anything that will take a, sorry, yeah, three quarter inch, anything that's a quarter inch you can mount on there. And then we've got this proprietary um, Manfrotto um, way of actually mounting stuff onto it. And the way to do that is to actually you get these sort of uh, studs. This is a, a hexagonal stud, which you can get with different uh, with different threads on them. Um, this is a quarter inch. I think it's a three eighths. So if I wanted to use that, you can see it fits nicely into there. And then in order to drop it into its bottom position, there's a pin here. Let me just show you in detail. As you can see there, let me get in the right angle. There's a pin with a, with a cutout in it. So obviously, let me just push the pin again. That cutout will allow you to lock that into there once there's enough, make sure and this is out of the way because you'll you tighten it up with that. So at the moment now, if I push that pin, it's an awkward angle to use it. So that's now in there. It is loose. It won't fall out because the, 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 the actual locking pin puts a slot in it and it holds it together. And then if you wish to tighten it up, then you just tighten this and that will make it extremely tight in there. And whether you use the quarter inch end or the three eighths inch end, you can screw onto here whatever you want. As a first pass, let me just um, invert that. And what I'll do is, this is sort of the bargain basin stuff in terms of what you need to do. Let me just get this out here. It, the spring's quite tight in that. So if I go to the quarter inch end of it and drop that in, as I say, it's quite awkward I'm trying to do this to camera, but let's carry on with that and I tighten that up. And what I can do is I can stick on the end of that, this um, Manfrotto um, 
flexible arm here. So this flexible arm here, I can screw into there, either three eighths or a quarter. I think a quarter is probably a bit weak for something like this. I would uh, plumb for going into the three eighths end. So once that's in there, that's going to be very, very tight in there, and I can actually then mount. Now, in order to mount it onto uh, anything that's circular, you take that out and you get a nice little V-shape to lock into here. And when I tighten that up there, you can see that will allow me to tighten onto the arm here, onto the, my, my stand, and then I can flex this to whatever position I want, okay? And then if you want to add anything on the top, there are many ways of doing it, but this is actually a camera bracket. Let me just, uh, yeah, that's a camera bracket. You can see the bracket has these holes in, which allow me to drop this into here, and I can tighten this up. Get it right? Tighten that up. And I've now got, let me go down a bit lower so you can see it. I've now got a, a sort of um, camera bracket here and I can mount lights, flashes, cameras, whatever. I put a little um, ball joint in here with a quick release plate. So if I want to pop a camera onto there, let me do this. Um, I just have to drop the camera into there. And away it goes. Make sure we're in the right position there. Let's always get it right, Mr. Murray. So pop that into there. So that camera is, is now in there. I'll drop it down a little bit so you can see it. So I've got the camera in position there, and you can see it's very, very wobbly, and obviously this camera is a little bit too heavy for it. So you probably would only want to mount a GoPro on there. I wouldn't go any, any, any heavier than that. Obviously, when it's, it, it's in a, a flex position at the moment, but if it was in a vertical position, uh, it, it's, quite, it's fairly stiff, and you would get away with mounting something a little heavier. So the next step up, let me just take this out. The next step up in terms of what you would mount on there would be to go to the um, the Manfrotto uh, the Manfrotto variable friction arm. Here's the, the 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 variable friction arm. Now this is a this is head and shoulders above um, what you would need in order to, to to mount stuff. So you would then place this into here, and this variable friction arm it's solid and it's all controlled from the one point here. So let me just demonstrate that. Before I mount this, just to give you some idea of the dimensions, it's approximately 24 inches uh, in length. Um, there's a ball joint at the top, a ball joint at the bottom, and there's a knuckle joint here by the knob. So in order to uh, get this to move, you just release this and then you can move at the knuckle. You can also move at the ball joint as well. Uh, and you'll see this is a much better way of mounting and uh, having the stiffness required to carry a fair bit of weight on there. If you look at this end, what I've actually done here, let me just go to here and show you. If you look at this end, I've placed a stud on here, a hexagonal stud, which will then allow me to plug it, it directly into, into here. So it's, it's going into the C-clamp, and if I press the button here to allow it to go fully, settle fully in, that's now in. As you can see, it's obviously a little loose because all I need to do is just tighten up here on this, uh, this nut here. Just tighten that up and now that's pretty strong now. So now I can actually now release this and articulate this in any direction I want. So you can see there's a fair amount of flexibility in that and you can get it to exactly the position you want. So in this particular case, what I'm going to do, as before, I'm going to mount that uh, small uh, Sony camera just to show you the difference in the, in the ability of this to be pretty stiff and take, take the load as it were. Returning to my... Um, uh, camera bracket mount, you can see I've still got this as it is before. I'm going to drop that into there and lock it in. And you'll see now when I, when I put the camera on there the, uh, how, how much better it is in terms of its stability. So if I pop that into there, you can see already it's extremely stable. Let me drop it down a little bit further for, so you can see it. So if I go to there and move the ball joint up to there, you can see you can get it in exactly the position you want. So let's say I wanted it in that position. I'm going to move this ball joint. I'm going to move this ball joint around so I can move it back on itself to get it f in it flat. So that's going to be roughly where I want it. So if I lock it off, you can see just how flexible that is. And then I can actually open up the camera there, and you can see it's actually working the camera, and it's pretty stable. Okay. So that is that is the next level up in terms of being able to um, mount stuff onto my famous. Um, monitor bracket, a monitor stand here and bracket and you're, you're one step up in terms of being able to control and, and have a pretty solid platform for a camera. The next phase I want to look at is I'm going to look at now the, uh, the Manfrotto um, 
it's the three section double articulated arm which is like the final level up I think in terms of flexibility so that's what I'll do I'll, I'll, I'll move to that and show you how that works so here we are uh, the Super League stuff here as it, as it were this is the the arm here which allows me to, uh, quite a, a amount of flexibility at each sort of um, knuckle that I can with a small turn simply move this out and I can change the position that wherever I want it okay so I've got a full uh, 360 turn on that similarly with this knuckle here as well too and at the both end knuckles I can do the same thing so it allows me to position this in many different ways to get it in an exact position that I want uh, I'm going to now mount this onto the um, onto the stand and onto the um, the clamp, the super clamp. I've also put an extension. This is the um, the Monfrato extension for the super clamp, uh, which is designed and suit and set to go specifically into the super clamp. It extends this out a little bit. It also changes the orientation from uh, coming out in this direction, the uh, horizontal direction, to a vertical direction, which I want that flexibility. It sort of extends it and puts in, a, in a, an orientation that I wanted. So let me just go to that and you can see how I fit that. So at the moment now, I'm, I'm going to use um, this end of the arm. So you can see this end of the arm has got the hexagonal, um, the hexagonal um, shape on it. So I'm going to use that to fit that into here. Let me just twist this up. So it's in a position that's going to be easy to work with. It's a bit like fishing this, I guess. So as I drop that into there, it will fit into the hexagonal so it's locked in. Once I tighten it up, it becomes pretty firm. And that then allows me, I'm just going to turn it around so you can have a better view of the changes I can make with it. So you can see here, I can move this arm in this direction if I want to do that. Um, I can also change the length of it if I want to. I can slide it backwards that way to change the length. Similarly here, I can change the length of this one. Um, to, uh, sorry, that's the orientation of that one. I can change the length of this one. So if I want to bring this a little closer, I can push that that way. So you can see it's pretty dynamic in, in the changes in the length it can make. You've got this up and down movement on my stand here, the stand, the famous stand that I've talked about before. And that allows you to a lot of flexibility in what you can hold in here. Um, this will then allow me to put, as I did before, said he trying to find it, I can actually put the, um, the camera bracket on here and that will give me a, just a little bit more flexibility. And I'm just turning around to find the camera bracket and the camera bracket is here. Let me just get it off here. Bear with me a second. Just got to get that out. So, okay, so there's the camera bracket. So now I can put the camera bracket on here and I've now got uh, this onto here. And that will allow me to mount the camera onto here so I can actually take the camera and mount the camera and let me get that camera again. I picked this particular camera because it's, it's slightly heavier than some of the, uh, the, the very small uh, mirrorless cameras. But you can see now I've got this and I've got the ability to use the ball joint to place the camera in whatever position I want. Uh, I can change the orientation of the plate as well too. So there's lots of flexibility in, in being able to mount. So if I take that like that, I can do that. I can also change its position that way. Uh, if I want to do that. Uh, so you can see, you can practically place the camera wherever you want the camera to be. It's as simple as that. So that's sort of the, the, the next level up and that's probably the level that, um, that you will cover most of the things you want to cover. So um, I hope that's been useful. I've gone through the different permutation combination. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set it up in a configuration that I have it permanently, which allows me to use it on uh, this front facing desk here. And I've got a side desk to my right here, which allows me to swivel it around and use it on that desk. So you've got a lot of flexibility. Okay, so I've now connected the um, and orientated the camera to be a rostrum camera in order to demonstrate something on this desk. Let me show you the wider shot here. The wider shot is I'm on uh, this far camera and you can see I've now got it set up to um, focus down on this stream deck here. And you can see going back to the arm, it's coming from the arm. If I want to, I can swivel that round onto the main desk there and, it, and I'll show you that in a minute so I get a different orientation. So let me show you as the Rostrum camera. So if I was demonstrating, say, the Stream Deck or whatever you want to uh, demonstrate, this is a Rostrum camera. There's still a slight bit of movement. If I touch the camera, 
you'll see you get a little bit of movement but if I don't touch the camera uh, that's actually desk movement that not not camera movement so providing it, you know you're on a very stable su surface you'll see no movement at all I've got the disadvantage that this particular desk here if I go here this particular desk is actually quite wobbly which is fine it does work for what I want to do so basically that's now set in the position that I want I'm going to go wide again and I'll show you I'll swivel around to uh, provide a rostrum camera in the other on the other the other the other sort of orientation so I'm now going to go if I go to here I want to sw I'm going to swivel the camera around to do a, um, a rostrum shot onto there as well too so let me just do that and I'll swivel the camera around just lock it unlock it off here so I go all the way around here and place it there and lock it off again. You'll see now, I've now got it in this orientation. So if I swap to the camera, you'll see now that this is now actually a rostrum camera for what's going on here. So I can use this particular uh, bit as a rostrum camera. I can also orientate the camera around if I want to use the camera to speak to. So just for example, let me just do that. I'm going to swivel the camera around famous last word so I'm now swiveling it around into a mode where I can just use it as a camera to uh, sort of talk into so if I go here you'll see now I can use this camera to talk into at a different angle so it's very flexible you very quickly turn it around into doing something I'll swivel it around so it'll should capture me when I'm at the workbench here sorry about the close-up of the ugly mug but you're born with what you're born so now I've now got her in this position I'm slightly out of frame here because I've just twisted it around let me go back to my proper camera here which is my main camera so you can see it's a very very flexible system and it allows you to actually place the cameras in any particular place you want to do so which expands the use of um, your cameras and it's it's so flexible um, by very simple piece of technology starting from the, the, the very cheap stand and and gradating up to whatever you want and whatever stability you want and whatever flexibility you want. So uh, I hope you, um, you've enjoyed the little journey that I've made. I've quite enjoyed it. I think it's actually quite good. And obviously, if you like the video, please like, subscribe and uh, comment if you wish to do so. And I actually look forward to seeing you in the next video.